Hi guys, uh, welcome to Investing with JYK, and today we're talking. We'll talk about uh, shorting South Africa and how this might be a good, a positively yielding hedge. Um, I think I talked about me being short Africa on the video that uh, introduces the star capital valuation map. Um, so it actually has multiple purposes in, in, in my portfolio. So um, I'm long LGIH, which is very sensitive to um, the, well, at least the stock price is very sensitive to the US interest rate. Now, with the interest rate going up, uh, the mortgage will be more expensive and then people uh, won't be able to afford uh, the same priced house unless the, their income rises by the same level. So the, there is a need to offset that um, to, to offset that uh, that risk, the, the U.S. interest risk. So one thing that I thought about was, okay, so who's gonna, who else is going to suffer uh, because of U.S. interest rate going up, and they are going to suffer anyways. So basically, I want something that is going down, and then that will get exacerbated by U.S. Um, uh, interest rate going up. So one thing that clearly is going to suffer when U.S. interest rate goes up are company, uh, not uh, not companies. Well, companies too, but countries with uh, lots of external debt. Typically, these external debt will be denominated in dollars, as it is the current uh, world reserve currency. So I need to find one that has a lot of debt. And then the other thing is it is going down not uh, just by itself, uh, even without the dollar going, uh, the, the rate going higher. The reason for uh, that external debt is going to uh, screw a country is that when dollar goes up, suddenly their debt is more expensive to service. And why would the dollar go up? Um, because of the interest rate, right? Because if you want um, interest rate in, say, U.S. treasuries, you need to buy dollars and leave whatever currency you were in. Dollar denominated interest rate, at least on the short end, used to be close to zero. But since 2016-ish, that has been steadily going up. Now it's close to 2%. And in other major currencies, they're much lower. So now you suddenly have this, um, the, the comparative value of dollar just went up. And um, for 10 years, you can get 3% now. I mean, 30 years is still, the yield curve is very flat at the moment. So the 30 year is still basically stuck in place. So that's the other thing so when the yield curve in, uh, inverts typically that's like a sign it's a very good indicator it has i think not failed for the past six times or something for to to, to predict a um uh, a recession uh, and it kind of makes sense i'm just i'm on a tangent but it kind of makes sense that the the, the long yield the long dated yield is basically uh, two factors that people, if you think about how people price it, is inflation plus growth, right? So those two things kind of determine uh, what the long term is, what people expect that is. So assuming that people got it right, people will get it wrong. Assuming people got it right, then um, the they're basically saying for you know. Overall, the U.S. inflation plus growth is going to average out to about 3%, plus a little bit of premium. So uh, the, 
so yeah so that is not increasing much because people don't expect the change too much but uh, the short term will va uh, vary a lot because uh, that is that can be controlled a lot by the Fed if they increase the overnight rate and obviously the uh, the, the Treasury notes and and um, uh, bonds um, has to go up to be at least higher than the overnight rate otherwise I would just buy I would just park it at the Fed and get the overnight rate so with the uh, now that the US dollar is more attractive so a lot of money will get sucked out of the world and then go into the, the US dollar and then US dollar price will increase as there's a higher demand for dollars to buy these uh, treasuries okay so um, um, that would mean the um, on, on their domestic product from the pro domestic point of view like uh, the the debt burden on an economy suddenly goes up because now you have to pay at a much higher valuation than you borrowed it so that is bad for any country with a lot of external debt okay so why South Africa uh, so first of all you can look at its GDP this is denominated in 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 dollars. Um, the the it's kind of going down, but whatever. It's it, but on its own term, it's still growing. Uh, it's still growing. And but note the number. It's about three hundred billion, right? The other thing is look at its external debt. It is about a hundred and seventy billion. So fifty percent of GDP. Is in foreign debt so imagine dollar goes up you're in a pretty ugly state so that is one reason I'm very down on South Africa the other thing is if you have you know if you earn a lot of if you have a lot of export and earn dollars um, it's fine because you will you need to pay these debt but since your revenue is in dollars that's fine too but the South African current account is has been negative since about 2003. So they don't have that much um, new dollars coming in. So that's a, that's basic one thing. They have a lot of external debt, not much dollar revenue, and not much external revenue. External debt, but not much external revenue, so that's bad for their currencies. Um, and uh, the second thing is that they have this crazy land appropriation um, law that this this whole government is pushing and they're saying that they're gonna do it regardless and they're saying this is good for the economy but if you th just think about it right um, what they're proposing is that they're gonna take all the land from the white farmers which probably got it because of colonization or something in the past um, but it was inherited for like hundreds of years basically um, they're gonna take all that land and just redistribute it to black people so this is the definition of well for me at least this is the definition of racism um, but put the moral judgment aside think about what's going to happen so farming is not just that like is is not a a, a completely uh, a skillless job at this in this modern day and age right if you give me a farm i wouldn't know how to grow these things i don't have the knowledge so okay so you give these farms to the black people that have never owned a farm presumably what's going to happen 93 percent of the land currently the farmland is on are, are is owned by uh these uh, white people mostly like dutch by ancestry so 
that's basically the, the 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 land is either going to go fallow because the other thing is you can't over farm it you have to you have to the land you have to like kind of keep it in a in a, in a equilibrium if you suck out too much nutrient out of the land um it's no longer going to grow right if you put too much fertilizer from what i know if you put too much fertilizer the land actually becomes these these hard um uh blocks instead of this uh what you imagine as land which is basically a bunch of uh, pretty loose soil which promotes you know air and water going into the roots so you you can't go overboard and on the other hand you have to kind of maximize its output it's not a, 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 a easy job. I mean, it's not as complex as rocket science, but it's still, you need some know-how to, to get that working. So they are going to push that. Uh, they are going to do it regardless. Um, they call it land appropriation, whatever. So they want to do that. So that is bad. And um, not just because I predict it's going to be bad, there is a president, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe went forcibly, um, you know, compulsory acquisition. They actually pay. Um, and then after that, they got fast track in 2000. And think about what happened in Zimbabwe after 2000, hyperinflation. Why? Because their domestic output went to basically nothing they used to export food after the land reform they got famine so i don't know how this is going to be any better for the the um south africans and there are also reports about uh essentially uh crime that's targeted to white farmers. So this is a pretty fucked up situation, um, both morally and economically, right? So are they gonna sit there and just let, you know, they're not, it's, it's, we now have internet, right? We kind of know what goes on. So are these white farmers gonna sit there and wait for their land to be taken away without compensation? I highly doubt that. And, you know, the other things is like once these land get taken away, what's going to happen to, say, bank loans that are mortgaged, that are backed by these these um, farms, farmlands? You don't know. Right? So it's, it's all a lot of uncertainty and a lot of potentially destructive forces. And if you look at what happened in Zimbabwe, you yeah, impact on uh, uh, output um, in in 2005 45 of percent of the population is now considered malnour malnourished so it's it's just uh, you know it's it's, it's going to be bad so if they keep pushing for that that's bad um, and the other thing is uh, um, this country has been pushing for this um, affirmative action for a long time. And I just found their website on uh, affirmative action. So what it says is for employers with 50 or more workers, blah, 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 they need, they, they must be equally represented in all job categories and levels of the workplace. Okay, so now basically you can not pick people that are the best for the job by law. And the result is, for example, in 2005, this ESCOM company, which is their, uh, their uh, um, uh, what do you call those? Um, it's a utility company. They have to fire white employees in order to comply with the law. 
So you might say, oh, but why can't you just hire black people or whatever? But what if there aren't that many black people qualified for such jobs? Right? So this is 2015. And uh, yeah. And then the other thing is I started checking on like South African hiring websites. They even have this like equity statement. Preference will be given to suitably qualified applicants that are members of that des designated group in line with employment e equity plan and targets of, of organization operating division. I don't care what your political stance is. This, by definition, is going to is going to reduce the efficiency of the economy at least at least in the short term. So that's another thing that I don't like about this country in terms of uh, um, in terms of um, uh, economic growth and you know stock price in, uh, performance. So um, one more thing they have the this country is like. There's so much weird tension going on. I I I was um, I saw this video about. Uh, you can check it out check it out yourself. But I saw this video in a university uh, discussion. So some woman go started arguing that oh we should you know reconsider science as it is. It is white. It is not black. Why don't we, you know, why don't we think about voodoo magic? And then some guy said, I don't know if the guy's race, but the guy basically said, but that's not true. And then they were like, oh, this is a safe space. You should apologize. I'm like, holy shit, that's your university like club? Like, what the fuck? But anyway, that's the people. And this is from what university? University of Cape Town. Yeah, I assume this is you know one of the better ones. Let's look at the ranking. I mean, it's pretty shit on the world, but um, let's see. Are there other, any other South African ones? Uh, Uh, is there anything else? Rankings. Hmm? There's nothing here. Uh. Top universities, okay. University of Cape Town. Well, their ranking has been dropping quite significantly. Could be cherry picking because this is this is definitely um, a single data point, right? I have I have never been to South Africa. I have never done stati like a comprehensive study on this university, but just by looking at that, I'm very uh, I I get a, a impression that I'm not very uh, positive on this this um, uh, did this university so let's see is there like a rank ah never mind you can look it up yourself in if you're interested but yeah they've been dropping um and okay so to conclude why am i short south africa couple reasons um it has a lot of uh uh external debt with not much external income, so that renders it very vulnerable to uh, U.S. rate going up. So that is a good offset for the for LGIH's uh, sensitivity to U.S. Um, interest rate, at least on the short end. Uh, so the like the shorter durations. So even without. Um, even without that effect, the company is so mired in this whole race thing, it is going to hinder it so uh, a lot, in my opinion, in forward progress. So you got land appropriation, you got potential revolt by the white farmers, 
um, that you've got um, the presidents of um, Zimbabwe and you've got uh, this this equal outcome hiring so you have to have the same proportion of groups at each at every single level and um, you've got education system that promotes weird just weird um, uh, I don't know weird thinking is like unobjective and 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 non and and does not value science right so that's bad thinking and overall I mean you know even if you look at valuation it's not particularly cheap at 1.8 you can buy Chile or you can buy China at one might as well just buy China why would I buy South Africa so yeah oh and then one more um, thing that uh, I just thought about I remember there was a big gold producing company in South Africa and because the rand was artificially high South African rand was was a, was a artificially high for a while they were making no money because gold was produ uh, was um, priced in dollars and uh, their production cost is is um, quoted in rands so if rand goes up suddenly their price goes up their production price goes up production cost goes up but their selling price does not so they don't make any money so I think I saw that uh, earlier this year end of last year ish it's, it's, it's around the time I started shorting um, South Africa um, so yeah and those are my reasons and you might be in a different situation especially if you don't have too much exposure to the US interest rate so um, yeah and I'm thinking of maybe producing some more videos on uh, portfolio construction in the sense that how you get an overall um, positive expected return was minimize volatility and volatility isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just that as, as humans we have to recognize how far we can bear that pain and be cognizant of our limits right? so having some kind of hedge um, it, it is good psychologically yeah so let me know what you think about that and um, uh, yeah, that's it from me to today, and uh, if you like it, click like. If you don't, click dislike. Remember to subscribe, share it with your friends if you have friends that are interested in uh, investing, and see you next time.